So we're here with Thomas Blackshear working on some new pieces. Uh, what do you have on the easel today, Thomas? I have a portrait that I'm doing of an Indian. I, I saw an idea quite some time ago from this particular photograph. And then I just ran across it last night. I said, yeah, what the heck? Might as well bring it and see what I can do with it. So I just changed the face a little bit, and um, but still using the same concept. And uh, fortunately, uh, it looks like the painting is coming along pretty well. I still got a few things I want to do to it, but it's, it's doing okay. What was it about that image in particular that kind of caught your eye versus just this one? I like the bling. <laughs> <laughs> so are those going to be like pearls or what kind of bling are you going to put on? Yeah, it'll be some kind of beads or something like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so is it like the decorative kind of ornamentation that kind of catches your eye or just because it's a little different? Mm, just different. And it's got a nice design to it. It's just got a nice flow and design to it and stuff. So that's why I use it. I'm always looking for something that strikes me as far as uh, design is concerned. And you've been doing a lot of Western artwork yes. recently, and what kind of caused the interest in the Western genre for you? Well, I've seen a lot of my friends uh, that I've known through the years. I've gotten into the Western market, and I always felt that I wanted to see if I could try it out and see what I could do with it. And uh, the opportunity came up a few years ago, so I decided to, um, well, a friend of mine called me up, and uh, Morgan Weinstein encouraged me to try to pursue it, and he told me he'd do whatever he could to help me get in it, and um, I was able to go in to one of his uh, openings at uh, one of the shows he was in, and he introduced me to some people. The next thing I know, I got a gallery, and uh, then the next year I was in the, the show with him at the Gene Autry, so uh, I've been doing this now for three and a half years, and um, I've been blessed. It's, it's working out well for me. You have such a huge body of work and like such a big variety of what you do. Do you think people would pick you as a Western artist or how would you describe your style and artwork to others? Well, one thing that I've done that I'm, I'm pretty proud of is the fact that uh, I've started a whole new genre for myself of Western art. I call my style Western Nouveau. And, uh, I'm really excited about that because um, it just seemed to fit for what I do. But I do a lot of different things, and one of the things that I've done, especially because I was an illustrator for 14 years, and during that time I learned a lot about how um, people perceive what you do. And so because of that, I've been very cautious and uh, very calculated in how I've handled myself as far as presenting myself as a Western artist. What I mean by that is, um, in any kind of art business, you gotta watch out, because if you don't, you will be paid. Now, if you just don't do one thing, and you wanna do different things, it's better for you to try to get people to know from the very beginning that all of the different things you do. So, if you do become famous for one look, they won't peg you and say, oh, that's not a Thomas Black shit. Mm -hmm. So, I came right out of the shoot showing them all the three different styles I do, so nobody can say to me, this, you can't, that's not a Thomas Black shit, that doesn't look like, I mean, I'm doing it all from the very beginning, so they know, okay, it might be this way, it might be that way, whatever, just so I can do what I want when I want to do. Is that one of the perks of not being an illustrator anymore, is doing what you want when you want? Well, yeah, a fine artist, you can do what you want, but the problem with being a fine artist from a commercial art, artist is, you gotta know who you are and what you want to do. That was one of the biggest things I had to figure out when I first started out years ago. Uh, um, when I started leaving illustration, I had to figure out, first thing that hit me was, well, who am I as an artist? What do I want to say? What's going to make my work stand out from everybody else? And that took time. It took time to find out who I was. And uh, But now, many years down the road, I know who I am now, so I, I'm having a little bit more fun about it. That's cool. So what mediums do you like to play around in with your work? Well, because I'm an illustrator uh, and I teach classes and stuff, I, I do all mediums. But now that I'm a gallery artist, of course, I'm doing oil and I'm learning how to paint better in oil now. So 
Would you say oil is your weakest out of? I wouldn't say it was my weakest. It's just that after being an illustrator and meeting a lot of artists, I've come to realize that the approach to art is different as a painter than it is an illustrator. And so one of the reasons why it took me so long to get more comfortable with oil was because I never put the time into learning how to be a painter meaning that I put time to learn how to be an illustrator and learning different techniques, but to be a painter and get comfortable with the paint so that you don't have to worry about messing things up and all that stuff. Well, one of the things that helped me was after I started teaching class, uh, I find my, found myself uh, going around helping all my students, trying to show them what to do. And because they would always make mistakes and I'd have to go by and correct their mistakes, after doing that for about three months, I learned how to paint. And I was shocked. I was like, whoa. And I said, look at that, man. I mean, this whole thing about teaching wasn't for them. It was for me to learn how to paint. And now I'm very comfortable with paint. And so I can just do whatever I want to do and, and not feel that I'm not doing it correctly or anything. And it, it has more of a painterly feeling to it, too. So. That's awesome. So something like this. How many more hours do you think you have left in it? Because you're you're painting this pretty fast. This is kind of coming out real real nice. Real I, quick. This is coming out even fast for me. I'm like, <laughs> okay, this, this is working pretty well. Okay, so um, I don't know. Um, Thank you for calling I think that if I had a couple of more hours in this, this would be done. Um, but I'm I'm really liking it because um, it's a more impasto approach. I started out as an illustration because I drew the whole thing out and usually I do a certain technique and stuff, but no, I went and just started laying my paint on and it started to all come together very quickly, even to the point where I'm like, whoa, why didn't that happen in my studio? Okay, so, <laughs> but it's kind of funny. I learned this about myself for some strange reason. I don't know why it's this way, but it is this way for me. I don't know what it is, but when when people are at my studio or people are around me when I'm painting, I get work done quicker. Okay. Are you more focused because the people are around you? I guess because they're around me and I'm more relaxed, I'm not sitting there uh, analyzing every area and stuff. I'm just doing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm freer and I just do it and don't worry about it and just get it done. And a lot of times I get a lot more work when people are around me. You know, you can come hang out at the gallery every day if you want to. <laughs> we won't shoot you away. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs>